Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. At uh, 2015, the European Cancer uh, Conference, uh, the results of Checkmate 25 in kidney cancer were presented. And um, the, the trial, in essence, tested whether nivolumab in second line was better than uh, everolimus in second line treatment of uh, clear cell histology uh, metastatic kidney cancer patients. And the results, I think, are really astonishing. Uh, it's a very positive trial. I think it's extremely important. The trial um, was run in patients, 70% uh, of patients had wa one prior uh, line of treatment, uh, TKI treatment, and about 30% had a second, were in second line, uh, were already had second uh, line treatment, so in third line uh, were entered into the nivolumab versus everolimus study. Um, the majority of patients were in the good intermediate uh, risk uh, category. Um, but then, if you look at the results, nivolumab first was uh, not really toxic, which is really important when thinking about checkpoint inhibitors. Second, um, interestingly, PFS didn't appear to be very long, and it was quite, quite similar between everolimus and um, uh, nivo nivolumab. But then, if you look at the OS, it's incredibly long uh, with 25 months of median OS for uh, nivolumab versus a also very good uh, OS for everolimus of approximately 90 months. So I do think that what has been observed is that probably uh, inhibition of checkpoint um, will mount an immune response it will probably take longer, we already knew that from melanoma, it will take longer as compared to standard chemotherapy or even TKIs in, in, in the case of kidney cancer. And so the responses are occurring later. PFS is not a reliable uh, assessment for these types of uh, treatment. And there, the OS is even continuing also after stopping treatment. So this is really something extremely important. It reminds us of the immunotherapy approaches years ago that were highly toxic, but beneficial to a smaller, less than 10% of, of the metastatic kidney cancer patients where you had complete remissions and even cure. But now with the introduction of an antibody like nivolumab, you are able apparently to treat patients to get tremendous nice um, clinical remissions that are really long lasting, but at a limited cost in terms of adverse events. So I think this is extremely important news for all of us. It's really exciting um, and I'm sure that nivolumab uh, will be registered and will deserve a place as second line treatment for metastatic clear cell kidney cancer patients. So it's really, really wonderful news after many years of hard working. The sequence of treatment of kidney cancer is going to change now that we had the data at the ECC 2015 in Vienna of two large studies. The first one, of course, was a nivolumab phase three in second line post-TKI in refractory patients. So more than 800 patients were treated in this study. In comparison with everolimus, nivolumab significantly improved overall survival, more than five months improvement. So this was the striking results, uh, which confirm what we have seen in melanoma, what we have seen in lung cancer, what we are going to see in many tumor types. PD-1 inhibition is active in cancer. So in renal cancer, it was suspected to be based on phase two. We just have a confirmation that the drug is active it's also safe, easy to deliver, very little toxicity with this agent, and it's certainly going to become one of the standard of care in kidney cancer with refractory disease after TKI. So that's, that's going to be a big change at the end of 2015 and for the next coming years. One of the questions will be, I mean, can we move this drug in first line? And that's the next step, especially in combination. So nivolumab is, uh, is an interesting drug, but it, it works on the pathway, which is called PD-1, PDL one And of course, I mean, we were thinking that we would have a biomarker to select the good patients to receive the drug. In kidney cancer, at least, PDL one expression in the tumor, as we tested 
in the phase three trials that we reported at ECC was not able to predict the good patients to select. So is it just a question of tumor type? Is it a question of the tumor samples we tested for this study? I don't know yet, but so far we don't have any biomarker. So at that point, we think that we should use nivolumab in every patient and then decide whether we should continue if it's active or not. The median duration of treatment in the study, in the phase three study, was around five months, so we have an idea of what is going to be the median duration of the, of the drug. The challenge to move uh, nivolumab in first line will be probably to combine the drug to some other drugs. So there have been different approaches for that. The first one is to combine nivolumab to TKI, and it makes sense because VEGF inhibition is important in kidney cancer. We face a problem with every TKI we have used so far in combination that the toxicity is very high. And at that point, it's difficult to, uh, to plan a phase three study with this kind of combination. It may be easier to combine with bevacizumab, which is a cleaner drug, so we'll see later if it works, but uh, that's one of the way to combine nivolumab and to move the nivolumab to first line. Another one is to combine nivolumab to another checkpoint inhibitor, and of course, ipilimumab is a, uh, is a good candidate because it's active in, uh, in melanoma. So it's actually uh, in study in kidney cancer, interestingly, with a different schedule and dosage that we use in melanoma, and it seems to be more feasible that it is in melanoma. So the phase one has been completed with good results, but uh, not good enough to be sure that the phase three is going to be positive. And we are actually in the phase three where nivolumab and ipilimumab are compared with sunitinib as first line treatment. Studies ongoing, we'll probably know the data from this study in two years from now. And uh, that's a possible way, I mean, to move nivolumab in first line in kidney cancer.